Welcome to another edition of World Surf Weekly, this time from Margaret River, Western Australia. We've got all the action from the Boost Mobile Margaret River Pro presented by Corona. From 10 point rides to massive upsets, the West provided once again. Plus, we've got a preview of the tour's next stop, Rottnest Island. Let's go. Welcome to World Surf Weekly from Western Australia, home of the Boost Mobile Margaret River Pro presented by Corona. Joe Turpel next to a man who spent a decade on the championship tour, Richie Lovett. Richie, the West certainly delivered, giving us a lot to talk about today. The West delivered everything and more, Joe. We had those big, heavy, deep water swells. We had huge waves. But for me, this event produced some of the most amazing power rail surfing that we've ever seen on the tour to date. I have have to agree with you there, my friend. Let's check out the finals bracket. Today was incredible. Main break delivered, beautiful offshore conditions, stayed clean from the quarters to the final. I remember John John injured. Griffin got the walkthrough into the semifinals with Jordy Smith. We saw McGillivray put up a big show for the rookies. That was insane to watch and working out an incredible final. Felipe and Jordy in the final here at Main Break for the first time in their career. Just amazing stuff. Uh, Felipe really peaking right at the right moment in the final and just bringing some of the best surfing we saw of the entire event. And you can see here Felipe just uh, starting to wind up. But it was Jordy who got things started in the final. Really fun to watch the big difference between carves. Both of them provide huge carving maneuvers. Even though Felipe is smaller, less volume in his surfboard, the speed he gathers to push against the wall at main break makes him unbelievable. Jordy looked really connected to start, looked incredibly powerful on his opening ride. Jordy looked really good, and the big fella from South Africa was throwing down some amazing rail turns. But Philippe, for me, just bringing a little bit more energy, a little bit more spice, and really attacking those sections. And it was those really fast direction changes for me, Joe, that made all the difference. And you can see he just turned up the volume from 10 to 12. Amazing how big those carves are, how much ground he's covering. I mean, we always talk about the John John turn, but both Felipe and Jordy deserve a lot of credit for how long they could stay on rail. It felt like there was a point in the final, though, where Felipe just removed himself from Jordy, kept building, and put more pressure on Smith, and he was able to take out that big win. It's just a real uh, moment for, for Philippe to bring him back into that winning circle, get that winning feeling back again, because there's been a bit of a hiatus from that time. And now with, with coming into Rottnest Island and the rest of the tour schedules, looking really good for Philippe. So he's going to be dangerous. He's into the, into the final five positioning now, which uh, spells danger signs for the rest of the competitors. 100%. He's third in the world now. After that big win, this is what Felipe had to say. Oh man, feels amazing. Uh, feels amazing, you know. After it's a um, tough but really uh, fun week, um, you know, amazing waves, amazing surfing from everybody, and uh, to take out this event, you know, with such amazing heats from all the boys, and um, for myself to be on top right now, it's it's amazing. And uh, this one's for Little Koa. Uh, happy birthday, son! I love you. So special. He promised his son when he talked to him this morning. They woke up, did a FaceTime. He's like. Happy birthday, my son. And he said, bring home the trophy for me, Dad. And he's like, I promise I will. What a huge statement. He certainly <laughs> delivered. That's a good dad right there, Rich. That's a great dad. And if you promise something to your son, you better deliver it. <laughs> and, and he did. So some little extra extra pressure there and perhaps that uh, little bit more motivation to, to really bring it home in the final. What a huge statement. First win in the West for Felipe Toledo and a new winner as well on the women's side as we check out the bracket on finals day. Seeing some big names and some new names make it this far in the draw. It was a personal best result for local hero Bronte McCauley. Stephanie Gilmore had never cracked the final before. She accomplished that over world champions like Carissa Moore and former event winners like Sally Fitzgibbons. That was a massive win for, for Steph to beat uh, Carissa Moore this morning in the semifinals. And, and I don't think we actually saw, truth be told, Steph's best performances throughout this event. And I think she would, she would admittedly say that, but she really you know, really pushed Tatiana in the final. It was a it was a great matchup. As we look back at the final, Steph Gilmore versus Tatiana Weston Webb. It's three apiece in their one-on-one -on -one history, including a close decision that didn't go Tati's way back at Bell's a couple of years ago. And after back-to-back -back finals here at Margaret River, Tati wasn't going to let this one slip away. Well, that backhand hook that Tatiana has here, it really made the difference, as you can see, up and under the lip here. 
just grinding it around for a nice cutback and she had to finish this wave. If she didn't get the finish here, Steph could have been our champion. But look at all the ridges. Look at how well she does to ride out of this. Fights the foam all the way to the finish. So strong, so determined. Steph put in some really good turns too, Joe. That's a beautiful style. Certainly did. She was left chasing a 9.4. Got a bomb of a wave right at the end. Still came in as her best of the heat. A little bit short of the 9.4 required. And it was Tati's day to get the first win of 2021. Kicking off her season with incredible form. Now she's sitting number two in the world, heading into Rottnest Island. What a statement for Tati. Yeah, that's, that's a really good position for her to be in. And she's in the world title conversation now. Going into Rottnest Island, the left hand is there. They're going to suit her style. She's gone second at Narrabeen, first at West Oz here in Margaret River, the next one. Man, she's becoming real dangerous. She's on an absolute roll. Tatiana Weston Webb caught up with Stace Galbraith after the win. With the turn that clinched the final, talk to us about riding through that whitewash, obviously surfing blind. How happy were you to appear? Honestly, I like think I broke my big toe trying to ride out of it. Like the grip was really strong, but um, yeah, so happy I made that because I really needed that for the win. Tatiana Wested Webb, happy to win this event. She's been so dangerous, but finally got the victory. Now moves to number two in the world. Right behind Carissa Moore. Gilmore jumped from fifth to third. Caroline drops from second to fourth. And Tyler Wright hanging on to that final spot in that final five, heading into Rod Nest. That is a rad looking final five, if you ask me. And, uh, you know, any one of those five women there capable of a, of a world title, some already have some. But uh, don't count out those others. Just just outside the five there, you know, Sally Fitzgibbons, even the even the uh, rookies as well. As we look at the men's final five, Medina hangs on to the yellow jersey. Italo second, Felipe jumps all the way to third. John John drops to fourth after that injury, and Jordy Smith sneaks into that last spot in the final five with a runner-up finish today. Jordy will be feeling good about being in that five now. He'll keep building. Uh, John John, we don't know what's happening there yet with the injury. And again, you know, Kanoa and great to see Griff right there as well. You know, it's only taken him a couple of years, but he's really starting to click with his performances and climbing his way up the ratings. If he makes that final five at lowers, he's going to be dangerous. Oh, I agree with you there as well. And I mean, it was tough, Rich, when you think about the guy to beat out here, John John Florence, who's changed the whole game on this old school wave. Before he got injured, I mean, he did give us a perfect 10. Mate, this uh, right here, arguably the longest and, uh, well, gnarliest barrel we've ever seen ridden at main break here, just all the way through the first section, second section, there was a third. He came out and he wasn't done there either. Saw this oncoming section and just hammer time. And it was a, a beautiful 10 point ride, uh, a really deserving 10 point ride. And as you said, Joe, he was the man to beat before the injury, laying down some of those uh, real power tracks that no one could match. Oh, it was so incredible. I think we'll have to wait another year to see if anyone could outmatch John Florence. He just took himself out with that injury as we wish him a speedy recovery. Coming up next on World Surf Weekly, we dive into the major upsets that happened here in the West. We'll be right back. Welcome back to World Surf Weekly here in the West. What an exciting day of action. Joe Trapel with Richie Lovett, who they used to call the rubber man back in the day. Richie, you know what it's like not being the favorite and going all the way to victory in your career. We certainly had some big upsets in this event at Margaret River. Yeah, we certainly did. And some of the big names not in the final series, Julian Wilson, Owen Wright, and on the women's side, Courtney Conlog. She was one that went out quite early in this event, but with some great matchups and some big upsets. And we had the crazy super heat with the world champions. And even though Steph has more world titles, Carissa's had Steph's number here at Margaret River as she was previously undefeated. She has multiple wins. And Steph, at this stage hadn't made a final before yeah well on paper and on form well it was carissa who was the the favorite here she had just been laying down some incredible surfing through all her heats with turns like that just uh really aggressive on the snaps and she was one of the women who really attacked that final section but steph she found a couple of great waves in this uh match up here and was able to uh, fight back and get one up on carissa it was almost in a similar fashion where like the heat where she had with sally where steph got the nine five at the end it was a similar late approach to get the victory. 
Steph locked into a gem, just needed a score in the seven range and got enough room to jam that first section. The finishing swoop sealed the deal and she turned the heat basically on the final way. Have a look at that slice right there. Full commitment on the rail extending all the way around. And that was the one there. Jake Patterson, my old tour buddy, uh, doing some coaching here with, with uh, Steph and, and uh, well, he was elated. That was a huge victory for Steph, uh, beating Chris at the first time in her career at main break, Margaret River, and that catapulted her to move on into the final. We had more upsets to talk about, though, as well. Seth Moniz, just in his second start on tour, had a matchup with world number one, Gabriel Medina, who hasn't missed a final this season. Huge win for Seth Moniz. Well, he has been unstoppable this year. We saw Gabriel Medina, a little bit of jockeying for position there, and then he started to pick things up. But as, uh, you know, he was self confirmed he said he just wasn't quite feeling it today and the little signs were there and we don't often see Gabrielle when he's not in just cyborg mode where he is just so dependable and hats off to the uh, young Hawaiian here he saw a little opening surfed really well it was a semi scrappy heat but uh, Seth did the best it's interesting because Medina still lost with the single high score of a 6.0 so Seth came in and he was like you know what I'll take that one it was very close but you got to take it and run with it anytime you have a chance with the door open against world number one Medina, that was a huge win. You don't get those opportunities against those big names very often where, where you're not left needing two excellent scores. And, uh, well, Seth just did really well to hold his composure, not feel the pressure, and just do some really good surfing and Gabrielle out of the event. Well, even though if you're a veteran, if you take out a guy with a big profile who's a local boy here in the West, it's making headline news. Jack Robinson, Jeremy Flores, is this maybe a vote for Heat of the Year so far, Rich? Uh, I just love this matchup. You know, uh, Jeremy Flores, Flores, he is one of my favorites. And, and have a look at this. This is just ocean knowledge here from the Frenchman, just picking an absolute gem of a barrel. This was on one of the larger days. Have a look at these final turns. So Jeremy on a longer board and really tapping into the power source, just slamming it right on that end section. So difficult. And Jack had a couple of moments himself. Also pulling into crazy barrels. Jack Robinson was loving the conditions at main break. These guys pushed it all the way to the end. Multiple lead changes, both getting barreled at main break, which, which was a huge statement, and give credit to the forecast and the, the waves in that heat. But it came down to a vicious two-turn combination from Jeremy in the nine-point range to turn the heat against the local hero. Well, this is about a triple overhead wave here, and have a look at the rail commitment on these two turns of Jeremy Flores. Just look at this. Mate, that is a giant section, and Jeremy just able to control it. And uh, it was a huge scoring heat, and, and Jack's score would have beaten majority of the heats in that round, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. Jack was quick to congratulate Jeremy, and it was interesting. Jack wasn't trying to hope for the box. He was like, let me go out of main break, put up a good fight, and Jeremy with a big takedown as he moved on. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on World Surf Weekly, we'll dive into the next stop on tour, Rottnest Island. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching World Surf Weekly here in Western Australia. Joe Terpelth, Richie Lovett, former champ at Lower Trestles. Richie, exciting news. Rip Curls bringing back the search. We're heading to Ross Nest Island, and I know you've been there before, so what can we expect? Well, mate, we're leaving the city behind and we're going remote. We're kind of getting back to that camping type atmosphere and uh, a break there called Strickland Bay. And it's more of a high performance wave. We're going to see the, the airs come back into play with a little bit of power surfing thrown in as well. So uh, a lot of surfers coming back into the into the favorites loving it rich let's go even deeper on what we can expect at rottenest island rottenest is a small island it's it's just off the coast of perth it's a beautiful place and the best way i could describe the event location strickland bay is a small version of main break margaret river kind of looks like a main break but maybe reverse where the left's a bit better than the right it's like a short, sharp right that comes at you, and then it's like a hollow kind of left that goes a little bit of a cut back into a really shallow ledge. Kind of like what we have at the end of Margaret River. The reef will pop out, they'll be doing crazy turns on the end. More of a high performance approach to that location. The best size, I'd say, it's six to eight foot, but the swell direction's key and the wind because it's on a really weird angle. So any wind from the north is really good for Strucos. 
If you get a huge big storm and it's howling onshore and like 10, 12 feet, Stricos would be no good. Dark Bay is a gnarly big left that's on the other side of the island. It's a good scenario to have that backup spot, but it's gnarly left. It's a beautiful little island. Anytime we get a chance to surf a new wave is, is always refreshing. It should be really fun and a, a unique experience to all be piled into the one island for another two weeks. So great to get some insight, uh, especially from Jake Patterson, where he had that look in his eye when he was talking about all the waves <laughs> on Rod Nest. Cool part is it looks like a more high performance main break, but with plenty of options around the corner. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a really fun uh, week or two over there. You know, we're kind of leaving the cars behind. We're going pretty remote. A lot of pit crew getting around on bicycles. And of course, we're going to be doing the quokka selfies. That's exactly right, Rich. Well, we had some unfortunate withdrawals from this next event. Stop number five. Let's see who's in and who is out. We've got some replacement surfers in. Mikey Wright will continue to get the call up with Kolohe and Dino still out. Liam O'Brien from the other side of the country is coming in hot. What an incredible surfer he is. We're going to welcome back Stu Kennedy, former CT Ripper, getting in there for John John Florence. Ace Bucken had a little back injury. So we've got Taj Burrow coming back out of his retirement. He left at Fiji a few years ago in the heat with John John. Are you kidding me? One of the most exciting surfers ever on on tour is coming to play at Rottnest. This is really funny because we, I was talking about this with Ronnie just the other day and we're going, who's going to come in? And uh, I threw Taj's name out and he goes, oh, I'm not too sure. I don't think he'll take it up. But <laughs> well, I think when he we, we had him in the booth here and he got super excited. You know, he's been mind surfing every single one of these heats at, at Margaret's. And uh, I think that gave him the motivation to, to don the jersey again. And just trust me, he is going to be ripping as well. Well, pretty exciting. I mean, yourself, Rich, you had a final together at Lowers, the one you won. But maybe for some of the newcomers out there to watching pro surfing, what is Taj Burrow known for? Well, Taj is all about uh, air game and he's all about electricity. And uh, well, he kind of uh, inspired a generation with his videos. And uh, he was one of the real pioneers in the air, uh, taking that approach to competition. So uh, today, you know, these days, he's more about the rail game, but he still has that air game too. So it'll be interesting to see him push our, our World Tour competitors. Really looking forward to it. Taj Burrow, I felt like he left us too soon. He was growing his family, and he said it was too hard to kind of do both. And he seemed so happy in his retirement when we've seen him the last few days. I definitely didn't see this one coming. So we're thrilled that he's into the main event at the Rip Curl Search at Rottenest Island. Coming up next on World Surf Weekly, Dimity Stoyle once again goes behind the scenes. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching World Surf Weekly. Joe Turpel with Richie Lovett, former champ in Holly Eva. Rich, really excited to see where we are on the tour now. Stop four, four different winners at each event for men and women. And the West absolutely fired with some big conditions. West is best, best mate. We've had uh, incredible stuff going on in and out of the water. We've been to the wineries, we've done the caves, but the real action, it was out in the water. Well, one of our favorite parts of the day is when Dimity Stoyle goes behind the scenes. She always gets the best out of our top touring professionals. These are some of our favorite moments, Dimity Stoyle going behind the scenes at Margaret River. Good bon dia. Bon dia. Bye, Brazil. How's your Portuguese? Uh, uh, bon dia. There you go. <laughs> Seth, a huge heat today. You ready to pump? Very annoying. Hate, but we're going to go out there and have fun. Look, you look like a boxer right now. Are you ready? <laughs> wow. Boys, are you still grilling him over his winning performance? Yeah, yeah it would be more. how we work. Yeah. Put on the throat, <laughs> just stuck him. We want more. But he won the heat. Oh, that's not good enough. Were you a first out this morning? Always. Forever. Always. I'll take Always. it to my grave. <laughs> first out. It's freezing. Good luck, Laura. <laughs> Sun's out, but buns are not out. It's freezing. <laughs> West is big leash. <laughs> clean as a whistle. <laughs> Find me. <laughs> You're not hiding too deep today. I'm not. You're really hard to find. Am I? You've been hiding. I try to. How was that? It was pretty fun actually. Really? I enjoyed it, yeah. I love that yeah. Yeah. juice. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> did, did you get a BTS of my BTS? Is it pretty sick talking to John John Florence? Like, <laughs> behind the scenes? Like, did you have to book in? Like, to that interview? <laughs> Dimity, 
is brilliant. Always gets the best. I mean, in between heats too. They give her they give her plenty of time. They let the guard down. They let her in, and uh, she's a breath of fresh air <laughs> all time. Can't wait to see what she does at Rot Nest. Well, now it is time for the set of the day. A lot of things to remember. I don't know if you want to remember some of these wipeouts because they were some of the biggest wipeouts we've seen in a long time. Absolutely. Well, the swell turned up, and have a look at this thing. This is Jadson Andre on what I'm calling a 20-foot face, and he got absolutely drilled. Have a look at that from the water angle and uh, poundings. They happened on this day, didn't they, Joe? Oh, they certainly did. I mean, we had people calling in from the big wave tour <laughs> once these beatings were going down, and it wasn't just one. There were several on the head. We'll never forget Kaios, the only guy to free serve at the end of that day, and he paid the price. Broken boards all over the place. The Shapers are incredibly busy preparing for the next event. But a great highlight was the first 10 of the season from John John Florence. Yeah, absolutely. And have a look at the length on this barrel. He just rides it two, three sections, pops out the end, and uh, John John had the crowd on their feet. So not only can he do the rail surfing, the power gouges, he can thread the needle as well. And uh, well, this wave here, this was the one that tweaked the knee and unfortunately sent Joe John John out of the event and uh, home to try and recover. Such a big injury. He was always supposed to win this event, but it was a big turning point for Felipe Toledo getting his first win in the West and his first win this season. Well, you can feel the performance just uh, starting to increase. Felipe, have a look at how aggressive all these turns are. And just, this is the Felipe we're normally seeing, you know, that fast turn, the power gaps, the power gouges. And look at this, bringing the rail turns as well. Just so much power. Small in stature, big on power, Joe. He's one of the best closers in the business. He makes the final. He often gets the win. Tatiana Weston Webb is sick of runner-up finishes today. She proved herself once again at Margaret River. Big backhand finishing move into the eight-plus range. Got her the major victory over Stephanie Gilmore. Well, it was uh, it was a really, really well-deserving win from Tatiana. Going one better. She got the second. Now she gets the first. The consistency is really starting to show here, and she's on track to be in that final five. Unbelievable highlights and obviously some tough ones too with some injuries, but just setting up a crazy title race heading into the next event. That's it for the show. Thanks so much for watching. Join us on WorldSurfLeague.com for the next event, the Rib Curl Rotten Nest Search presented by Corona.